spring it into disaster. That's what we're doing. Just keep jumping in. Just, well, just not really jumping into anything, really, are we? Not if we're being crickets. But we need to jump in. And uh, I don't know what else to say. Everyone wants to fight that. Want to make an excuse. And they want to enter into the problem the way they think the problem needs to be entered in. And my view has been it's not been the proper approach. And I come here every week to try and give you at least insights. And thank you for everybody sending emails and requesting insights or thoughts or directions. appreciate that. It really helps me to feel I'm, even though it seems kind of scattered, and I know it's ad hoc, I just bring it together. I just use the notice, uh, the news, the notice to us uh, to, as, a, as, a, as a jumping off point to each week, hopefully touching something somebody's interested in. And because each thing is, it's all based on what you choose, not not really more than that. That uh, appreciate what you guys are, all you guys and gals are doing uh, to start stepping into understanding a little bit better. And uh, those of you that, and it's now becoming more and more. Uh, and I think maybe since Clint Richardson's group uh, has taken his advice and, and tuned in, and I appreciate all that, all you all that are doing that. A lot of more of those guys are coming in or wanting to know what, how I. What, what my thoughts are, how I do, how do I approach this? What, what do I do? What's my methodology? And uh, I'll, uh, that's a little more difficult. I've thought about that for a long time. I think I take a lot of that for granted, but it became over a long time. And, it, and part of the problem was it came so slow and so methodical that I've had to build whatever my, my, my approach was over the time of the new, you know, as the information gets compiled. So I'll try to provide Maybe I'll put more thought to this. Uh, I've been thinking about it actually for a few days, actually a couple of weeks, as as the as the questions have been coming. How do I explain? How do I make the? How do I approach all this? And I just it is a very important question. So that's why I'm putting some time into it. I don't know if there's going to be a simple answer to this, and I don't know if I'm organized. My mind's organized enough to be able to figure out how I what I do. And all I can say is I've read a lot, and that means you're going to have to read a lot. Not a lot on the internet. A lot on, uh, that's why I say focus on a thing to do, not not a not a an idea to follow, or just an, an idea to learn more. Get something substantial to work on, and that's going to be a whole lot quicker guidance. But you read uh, about those things, and you start reading not just what you're told, but how they how it works, how it applies, how all this stuff and, and how all this stuff puts it's put together, and, and how the, and the, the likely responses you might get within this this thing that we're, we're now having to suffer. And suffer means you let it continue to go on. We, we haven't ended it. We have the, we should be ending it and we don't. This is that cricket syndrome sitting there. Uh, but uh, part of the way I approach it is not in defeat, certainly. It's literally, in a way, and, and again, these are all probabilities and possibilities. You, you take your best approach based on the information you have and that dictates how you're going to uh, how you're going to approach the problem, what what you are are facing with. It's, it's always on a specific thing. The way I approach it is that you have I say we have uh, it's not I say it but I've seen there are remedies available and for the most part those remedies are not used by most everybody. And I think a few of you that have li listened to me really closely have understood that. And the subtle nature of what I say is is almost maybe transparent to a lot of people. A lot of people. So th that's the hard part uh, in explaining. The, the approach is developed by what you're up against, and that is developed by what you have in you that you've studied to know was things to do. Literally, things to do. And I, I talk periodically about that, and you'll hear. It Maybe not as formal and organized as I maybe I should be, but I just don't have the time to put in. But you'll hear it when I talk about remedies, when I talk about doing an injunction, when I talk about the things about an injunction, when I talk about going to the rules of evidence. Those are the things that are in my mind that I am answering when I'm looking at a problem and, and how to how to go through it. Or more importantly, and I'm going to get to something here that I thought I talked about a few weeks ago, and again, I just wonder how many people really listen to what I'm saying. And that's another problem. Don't you can't take what you think and impose it on my what I'm saying because uh, you're not. It just won't work that way. You have to approach this from a position. Uh, there's a wrong you need to make right, and that there's a event. You'll come to the point where you can make it right. 
but it does take your energy to put into it. And what I don't, I really still don't think people have listened to what I've been saying. The subtlety of what I'm saying is, is really uh, interesting. I can sound like a lot of people, I suppose, but when in, in practice, it's not working that way. And uh, you can't, you can't just take what I'm saying and not listen to it and then impose what you think over the top of it. That's not going to work. Uh, and it's not a, a judgment in my mind about how that works. It's just the fact of it. I do want to address the, uh, well, before I get on, before I, pre- I lose it, this will be BTW RLM 264 on the past cast, recast, blogcast, whatever, wherever you find this, this broadcast, BTW RLM 264 will get you to at least get us uh, on a search. We'll get you to the links I'll go to eventually here uh, on the subject matter of the topics of the news of the notice today, which I'll try to give you not just reading the news, but I'd say, okay, here's the subject matter. Here's how it might be interesting to you. And here's the elements of some things that you can take from here and maybe use them in your life. Because I just see this thing as one big fractal. It doesn't, it doesn't really end. It starts at a nano scale and it goes up to a macro scale. It's all the similar, it's all a similarity. But BTW RLM 264 gets you those links if you're interested. And I think you need to be on the things just to see more fully what I can talk about because I really only speak from the headline gives me the thing, the subject matter of what I wanted to speak to to explain. But let me get to something I mentioned. I thought I mentioned it and clarified it before. And I, and it, I get this a lot uh, from people, and it, again, not a judgment at all, just a response. And I don't like doing this trans broadcast. It's very difficult to discuss this. I don't. It's not. I'm not making an argument. It's just a position, an observation. But uh, there was um, a statement made on uh, Freakers Ball. Uh, Moose Girl was saying that you can't uh, get inside the system and fight it. You can't go to their system and expect the results. And she took um, an alternative position from my opposite position. Uh, for mine, and I appreciate anybody's opinion. In contrary, it doesn't really matter that we agree. It's are we going to get something done if if we both agree that there's something to be done? And that's the other thing. So this is why I say everyone decides this on their own. But she says you can't fight from inside the belly of the beast. You can't you can't do that. Well, here's the problem with with that. You, you can't disagree with me if you don't actually. None of you. I'm not talking about no boost girl. Forget that. I'm just talking about a concept here. You can't disagree with me if you truly don't understand what I've been saying. If you listen, and I'll give you, I'll try to give you an example here, so it's no, not esoteric at all. I'm, if you, if you listen carefully, to what I'm saying, I'm not saying you're going in into the belly of the beast. I consider this whole thing more, and it's not a semantic metaphor problem. I consider this thing a parasite, and we shouldn't be letting it in us. And when you look at what law says and what rules say, the very first challenges are whether or not the thing against you has the right. To, 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 to eat you. It has the right to take you into its belly. And so the very first battle is to make sure, not that you're going into the belly of the beast, but you don't go into the belly of the beast. These are the avoidances I talk about. These are the remedies that are collateral to the attack that you, you learn to use. At least you get a, a record of it that I've found to be very much more efficient and a much more functional and efficient than anybody's opinion I've ever seen about, uh, to the contrary of what, what I'm saying here, that this is not, listen very carefully what I'm saying, you're not going in to the belly of the beast, and if you, okay, because that's, if you're not in, then you're not going to go in, you literally bind the mouth so it can't devour you, that's what jurisdictional challenges are about, that's what collateral attacks against this authorita are, so you're not, ne- you're not fighting from inside. Those that are inside, because you've a consented in, and we all have these these things, none of us are, all of us have an attachment. I don't care if it's down to the last note, Federal Reserve note you still have to use. There's that, that attachment, and you better understand that lineage and how the liabilities uh, stack up. You can still address it, but you have to understand the terrain. That's what I keep saying. Let's say that makes us in the belly of the beast. You just have to know what gives the beast indigestion then. Because you're already in it. And I guess this is the other thing. The subtlety, you can't disagree with me when you don't understand. You're, you don't understand you're already in the belly of the beast. If we weren't, we wouldn't be talking. We are attempting to stop being in the belly of the beast. And I have come along over time and over time done things that I'm maybe 
maybe only part of me is in the belly of the beast, and the other part's sticking out of the mouth, beating him on the nose. I mean, I don't know where where I position myself. Uh, but you go subject by subject matter, and then it's pretty simple. I don't have some of the things that a lot of people in society have. I have now been moved outside of the belly of the beast. I do not allow the belly to be thrown into the belly of the beast. And let me give you an example now. For minors, and this is a, I, I resort to this because it's really simple for us, if we really understood what I've been saying. The authorita, the, B, the agency, will come against you, a, fed, a forest service or the BLM, and they'll tell a miner who's on an uncommon mineral claim that they have to file a plan of operations and whatever all bonds and all this other stuff. I have many broadcasts that explain how that authorita is a crime against any mineral estate grantee and how to address that in one letter. When If it goes to two letters, you now catch them in the crime. Uh, normally, with all the people I work with, all the miners, the grantees I work with, it only goes to two letters. They don't have to get their permits. They don't have to post their bonds. They don't have any of that stuff to do. Because we showed the law, the authorita had no authority. That's not So they don't have to get the permits, which would be getting inside the belly of the beast. We keep them out. So I just understand what I'm saying. You have to look at the position. You may be in the belly of the beast. Now you want to give the beast indigestion at least. But if you can position yourself outside, there's no need to get inside. And these are the techniques I've been trying to explain. It's not the end-all, be-all answers for all the world. It's, it may be an answer for us, for you. And so I, the subtlety here, you can't disagree with me about getting in the belly of the beast when I'm not in the belly of the beast or I don't allow myself to be in the belly of the beast. Otherwise, you're in the belly of the beast. What are you going to do then? Do you just give in, and that's okay. I mean, that's a decision every each one of us has to make. Or do you at least give the beast the indigestion it needs? And I give those tools as well. See, I don't really care where we are. Let's just find out where we are. And it's like anything. You find yourself in a condition. You have to honestly assess that and then go from there. And a lot of times it looks like you're literally, I don't, this is no joke. You start looking at this. We are thrown naked into a battlefield, literally naked into an austere uh, terrain. And the people that have done that know us more better than our, uh, know us better than ourselves. This is not a joke, and this is not something to be trifled with and then to disregard it. So when you, when someone asks me, well, how do you come approach this? All these things I'm telling you is how my mind works, kind of instantaneously in a way. It's just, it's just a process that it goes through. It's very hard to discuss. It goes so fast, I almost, I don't know if I can, can discuss it. We can do it when you work on a problem. Like it goes through, it kind of comes out that way. Anybody that's worked with me realizes that's how it works. And eventually, you get enough study, and then you do the same thing. You start doing the very same thing. It's just the way this works out. So I know the fastest, the teacher will be your own self getting involved honestly with yourself. But anyway, get, get to the point that we're not getting, I don't have uh, grantees who are uh, uncommon mineral claimants we don't get in the climb in the the bell into the belly of the beast and the way you do that and we, and we can go to everyone you know kind of throws this stuff around and doesn't want to pay attention you know there's there's a, an authoritative book whether or not you want to agree with it or not it's authoritative there's principles in it it's called the bible there's principles in it you can follow that says maintain the narrow path how do you stay out of the belly of the beast but to maintain the narrow path now, I know it's not applied that way, but that's the lesson I got, and it works. And so I have to say, oh, by extension, I could, that's a cool principle. That's a good generic principle. And so that goes into my list of things that work. And that's the beginning of my thought process. That's the foundation from which I start to decide how to do much of any of this. And so not to, I'm not picking fights. I'm not taking judgments, nothing. It's just an understanding Understand your condition. If you're in the belly of the beast, I'm saying give it indigestion. But try not to be in the belly of the beast and try not to get, step into the mouth of the beast to become in the belly. That's what I try to get everyone to see. That there's, there's a whole kinds of things out there to do that. There's, but you have to do something. You can't just say it. You have to, and there has a property, a problem of doing it correctly. Why well, I say it's crickets, even if you're doing something but not doing it right, you're a cricket. 
Because the object is not getting in the belly of the beast, and if you're in there making a, a indigestion, so you're 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 removed. They, they, you become a bad thing in in the belly of the beast, and you and you persist, and you get out. You eventually get out. And so this is the subtlety that I'm bringing. I bring the principle behind the woodshed, and the subtlety. If you think I'm saying fight from inside the beast, you're not really listening to me. Even in our injunctions. I, I looked at the rules and I constructed a strategies and tactics that the, the government itself could not answer, but the rule of the law of the remedy took over and controlled. That's not going into the beast. That's utilizing the framework of what they give us due process in order to get the remedy the law requires. That we can't get enforcement should be your consideration. That's our real problem. So, But we don't go into the belly of the beast. We identify that it's the belly of the beast and say, you cannot swallow us to put us there. And we try to take every step to not get anywhere close to this beast. But I don't think it's the belly of the beast because it's a parasite. Politic. It all reduces down to these conceptings that are just not people, not men and women. You know, we can get all lost in all this dialogue. I, I don't want to get lost in it. I think it's, we have to get some basic understandings, basic ways that we approach. It's not that complicated. We we complicate a lot of things, and a lot of that's our just general ignorance. We're just ignorant, and it's been planned that way. That's fine, but I don't succumb to the fact that someone planned me to be ignorant. In fact, my fight for the last three decades is to o overcome a lot of that, or at least hopefully so. Does that make me superior? Well, on any particular thing, absolutely, maybe not. But it certainly makes an answer for me, and it addresses one of two conditions. If we want a condition, if we want to suggest the, the metaphor being the belly of the beast, I'm going to give that thing indigestion. I'm going to be sticking it in its gut everywhere I can. I'm going to be stomping on its kidneys wherever I can. And I'm going to learn how to do that. Uh, but the better thing is not to get uh, swallowed by it. What I've told you, one of the examples, I told you, the government is, the people, in, it's not even government, the government's irrelevant. The people that, that use the color of the government are felons, right off the bat. I just That's the definition, when they come against you into violation. But it's it's a beast of habit. And those habits are di dictated by those rules that we everyone wants to throw down and ignore and make up fantasy worlds around it. Like I know, like you all know what common law is. You don't know what common law at all is. I can tell by the way you, words you use. You don't even know when you're in it, when you're not. You don't know what it is. You think you know, so you invent a mythology around it. Instead of just taking the what the beast is going to be doing. The beast has a path. It goes from its, its den to the water source all the time. It's all you're ever going to find it is on the beast to the water source, to the, its, its funding stream. You're good, that's it. That's all it's going to be doing. And along the way, you can stand in its way and get eaten, trampled, drugged along, whatever. It, 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 you can go ahead and do that. Or you understand it's going to be a beast on that path. And you, cho you just have to make the choice to not get in the way. Or why don't you think about when it becomes cumbersome and problematic, build a trap. And what's the easiest thing to do? Well, you build a trap right in the pathway, don't you? So, you, you dig a pit for it. It falls in. And it has to fall in because it has to function. It's, it's, like, it's like AI. It has no real intelligence. It has just a function. It's a tool with a function. And so I come behind the woodshed to offer ways to approach this mis- this machine, this misfunction that's that's not working. All the checks were supposed to be there, but we weren't diligent and vigilant to keep them. And I just offer things to try to do. Nothing's a silver bullet. You're dealing with people. They got their opinions. Uh, they got their authority. Uh, so you have to start up upping the game, depending on those. That's part of your terrain uh, as well. And, and so. I, 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 wanted, I just wanted, I thought I talked about this before a few weeks ago. Listen to what I'm saying, not what you think I'm saying. Uh, look very carefully at what I'm trying to get us to understand. Understand each one of us has some decision that we need to make to do. If, and, and you're not doing anything if, if you're not doing um, it right. And that may take a lot of losing before you start to see what that is. And then there's always the problem of the occupying force. 
the criminals that look like author look like authority, well, how we would peaceably live amongst us who have adulterated that whole system, supplanted it, and it's right in the do it's right in the words for you. You got to look at the documentation that is this thing called government that people work through. It says that right in their words. So this is not a question for me. It may be a question for lots of people that like to play games with words, but it's not for me. Or I want to do live in the mythology land, it, it, make up stuff. It, it's, it's not for me. I can find much faster direction just to go to the statutes, the codes, and the things that everybody rails against and say, well, that's the limitations of that beast. Why else would I, what else would I say, as I've told you before, for those of you in the patent stuff and land and, and grants and all that that comes together, relationship trusts, all this interesting stuff, all man-made, all made up. Yeah, it's all fiction, but it's how we've created a way to live amongst each other. Otherwise, we're pretty brutal to each other. And I, you know, the first reference is Cain versus Abel. Well, that told me a lot when I realized what was going on there. But, so we've created a bunch of this uh, agreements on how we live. We call it law. We call it rules, statutes, whatever it is. Well, that government has to follow that. Why would you abandon something that would protect you? Why wouldn't you, those of you that have land and understand a little bit about it, when I explained to you there was a state and to, for you all to go look for this thing in your state that says that there's no judicial authority that can be presented against a patent land which would alter, modify, or abolish the rights that were granted in that petition. Why would you abandon that statute? when it offered complete protection against a judicial approach, a judicial case, a judicial department, and that is stops the complainant. Why, why would you abandon that? Is the constraint on that, on that beast, is what I've been trying to explain to you. You don't enter in and let them give them the issue to decide. You say, no, you don't even have this thing. I'm not walking into your belly. I'm not giving you a say over what's already been determined. And for all of you all that have believe you have rights and from whatever source, that's what you have started to assert up front. Not because you say so. You find the prohibition against their encroachment. And there's lots of ways to do that. So, anyway, I just wanted to clarify again. Be careful on interposing what you believe I'm saying for what I really am saying. And in this case... I don't know how you can disagree with me on getting into fighting from the belly of the beast when that's what I'm trying to make, allow everyone to see you need to avoid. And once you're in there, then what are you doing anyway? You're going to do nothing? You're going to do everything that's wrong? Or are you going to learn a, letter, a better, even though you're in the belly, and give it indigestion? And I say you, the, the, there's the facts inside that you can pull yourself out anyway. You can crawl back out. You can cut your way through, this, through the wall, as gross as that might be. You, the beast is just this fiction. And everyone makes a big deal about it, but doesn't know how to deal with an illusion. Understand that. You're dealing with an illusion. That's the fact. But it's dealt with in a particular way. And so all I've been saying behind which for a decade now, uh, as broadcasting, has been these things, these principles. I approach, any approach I have is how to take the available tools I've found over my decades of research and what tool would I use on this condition? And sometimes it's not a direct path. Sometimes you have to undo stuff. Sometimes you have to move the move it over. You have to put it in a place where you can work with it. This is all part of the, the strategy. We were talking last night in the in the RLM chat uh, what, about the thir original 13th Amendment. Yeah, yeah, I've read it all about it. In fact, we were talking about way back in the 90s, the middle 90s. There's a bunch of people pulled together all the proof that the original 13th Amendment should be the original 13th Amendment. And, and is it possible to use that today? And I, my suggestion was, why waste your time? Uh, when you see what they did, not the, the so-called patriots, but the system did with that, you realize it would be a waste of your time. There's an easier way to get at those guys. And we did that in 2013, just for, so you all remind how this all integrates, when we sued the Bar Association for treason. And they defaulted. Think about that, folks. You sue them for treason and they default. A binding agreement between you and that party. This is your, your bar system. Your bar association professions agency of each state and the federal government. Running your life. We, we sued it uh, to enjoin it from its methods of doing what it did. So, 
We, we can get at it much easier. Forget the titles of nobility of the far, at the, as a, a problem because what are you going to do? You're going to go up against them and give them the answer. Uh, the decision, see, the decision has that answer for you, and it's not going to really turn out. You're going to be just wasting your time, if nothing else. Notwithstanding that, I still offered, if someone was truly wanting to get this issue forward, there would be, in my mind, a way to do it. So it depends on what you want to do. Now, it's, that, it intrigues me a bit. You could get it on the record that they're not going to recognize a duly enacted law, uh, constitutional law, which will define that you don't live in that established government. You live in something that's a fabrication, a simile. That would be fine. That would be great. You get a record. That's the foundation we laid in 2013 kind of thing. You just laid the foundation. Make it, move it from opinion into fact. You move it, you move for a declaratory judgment was one of the observations I thought might work. That these proofs prove that the original 13th Amendment should be saying this instead of what it does say. And then you see what the court will respond to. And the combination of that is to move for an, in, a, an in equity uh, remedy which is a reformation or rectification. It's very rarely used, but it's there. When you go research this stuff, it sits there to do, and the court can redirect what that law should have said. Now, that's pretty interesting on its own. Some of you may not find it interesting, but it's interesting to me. It sits there to be used. I don't know if anybody does this stuff. No, we all complain about it all. But ultimately, it's irrelevant, because at some point, these people are occupiers, and it's easier to get them in a different way. And I think uh, what I, after looking over the view, I, I went out, I chose my, I chose a path I thought I could, I could execute on. And it worked out. Me and, and my colleague and the mining district. It worked out. Now, it worked out to the point of a default judgment. Again, this country, United States of America has set up its judicial system. It doesn't work uh, so well at the point and tells you it's not, it gives you the judgment. It doesn't do the enforcement. Now we're looking at the, uh, at the real problem. And there's too few people that truly understand it. No, they'd rather make up all these mythologies in their mind instead of looking at what the foundation is that we've been laying. And other people may have laid. I've seen some other things now coming subsequent to that that prove what we're saying. But, again, it's we have a problem. And this could be anyone you choose. And I say choose the one for you. And don't, don't, you don't have to put yourself in jeopardy. Choose the one for you that you want to make right. Why? Because you need to get back in the habit of becoming a vigilant mass of the, with the rest of the people that start educating themselves of what's really going on not what you're making up, and have factual basis for it, not an opinion. And this is the difference. You're not getting into the beast. You're identifying it. You're identifying it for the beast that it is. It's a parasite. I had a long time. I, I, you could say it's all. You can define it uh, uh, as anything. I mean, it, I call it the amoeba. You, you put a pin in front of it like an obstruction. It just goes around the amoeba pin. you got to deal with that. And, and two, th two pins may not be enough. It'll go between the two pins. It'll go around the outside edge. How do you contain this thing? You know, it ends up being a biological answer. And it has to be dealing with the system, the systemic amoeba itself. And you identify the things it can't do. It, it has to recognize that. And it does. It's fine amazing about that. So and I think maybe I have enough here. We need You need to listen really what I'm saying. I there You're... As a general society, you're all in the belly of the beast. I'm offering remedies on tools to at least give the beast indigestion. Some of us are partly not, in certain subject matters, are not within the belly of the beast, and I offer remedies behind the woodshed to keep it that way. That's the ideal point if we're going to be attacked. The ideal place is to the, the system, this beast, to recognize its limitations up front and not come and talk to us at all. That's how it's really supposed to be set up. And we're not, we're not supposed to be living this presumption of a status that's subject or a presumption of guilt that uh, underneath the color of your innocence and never be able to plea that out or whatever. See, that's the lie. People should be taking cognizance of these problems. And no, you don't live where you're told. And that's a problem. Now, is it whether or not does that really attach to you or not is another interesting problem. And I've found if you know what to say, you get the right word in your mouth, all of a sudden, it loses its force and effect. So all the people, like this, for instance, I'm just going to go rehash this a little bit more. If it's people don't really hear me, what if I said, instead of railing against the fact that the government's a corporation, and there's lots of styles of corporation, again, these are all tools for us, 
They're a fractal of our internal organization as well. We have organs, so we're organized. The state has organs. It's organized. And there's a function that goes on inside these things. When you can address that on its level, you're the creator, essentially, of that, and you understand its limitations, why would we have a problem with it? It's because we don't understand that, and we don't know what to say up front when someone comes against us without that authority. And we start to buy into it. It's kind of like I was trying to show you last week, and I'm fascinating that nobody listens to this stuff. Very few listeners. Not as bad as the uh, aluminum altruism uh, YouTube. That only got that still only had six views, folks. I'm sitting in a billion dollar mar a billion a viewer market uh, at least on YouTube, and I got six views on something that said autism causation. So people don't, apparently don't want to hear this stuff. But it's there to be heard for those that have the eyes to see and ears to hear and a way to punch through the people that are trying obstructing you. And why I appreciate all of you all that uh, will spread the word. Uh, what was it? Deprogram.org? Thank you very much. I happened to accidentally go through looking for some other information. Happened to go along your website again. Uh, De-program.org. There was like 800 visits to the one of the bot, the broadcasts. So I thank you very much. Don't know who, how many listened, but at least they went there. That's a whole lot more than the six on a billion dollar market YouTube. And so spreading the word, having you spread out the word is being very important just to get this word out. And it, it's not a dictation to anybody. It's the options and principles that are there for you to accept. Whether you do or not, I don't know about all that. I hope you do. I don't. I said I don't come here to hear myself speak, really, uh, talk and, and talk at you or or argue with any of you. I'd really, I'd, there's lo we have a lot of fun otherwise. I really would not be doing this if, if it wasn't such a dire thing. But if we're not going to get together on these principles, we really don't have a chance. And, and so, understand where I'm speaking from. If you would, stop imposing upon me something I'm not doing. Don't put yourself in that mental constraint when that's not actually going on. And when you do that, you'll, you'll trap yourself. And and again, um, I was hike, uh, these things, these thoughts are just so fleeting in my mind. Remember, just a, a month or two ago, maybe it's been quite a few months ago, I, I had a conversation with Clint Richardson, and I, and I was saying, you know, this whole thing is this, it's a perception management, and you better be in control of that, and you can bring on as much servitude as you want. I choose. And I was explaining a bit to him on how how this works. You don't allow someone to wrongly put a title on you or whatever. You avoid, you don't avoid, well, you avoid it, but you, you make sure that, that that's a defamation at some point. You have to be very strict about that. It's not that you're hard-headed, because if, if they attach a millstone around you, you're, you're going to sink. And, and, I, and I was saying, you really have to come with this, you truly are innocent, even of the impositions of what you hear is out there to impose upon you. You have to be innocent of that, truly innocent in your mind about it. And then you start when you're truly innocent of that 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 imposition, or, the, or the, even the uh, even the attempt. That should raise that raises the alarm immediately, and you can address only and only address that problem. That you you maintain your innocence in the face of the oppression, the trespass, the crime, the criminal, whomever it is. And until you have an idea that you are outside, literally, you literally, the outlaw outlier until you really understand that that's a possibility and get that you a lot of people are stumbled on their own misperception of what they are, are happening and, I, and I'd like and I, I guess that's why I'm taking a whole lot of time here to explain this do not impose upon me what you think I'm saying what I am telling you right now we are you lit on one aspect you are already this whole world essentially but the whole society of the United States is as free as it's been told is in the belly of the beast so that's the fact it's not that you do something to get in it's not something you go somewhere to get in you're already in there now step back one step unless you have some knowledge like myself and you know what the some of those I don't know all of them but some of those things that have gotten you in there 
If you don't have those attachments, you're not in there. And if you're not in there, then you don't have any need to go in there. And the defense is the challenge. You, you to identify the one coming at you is a trespasser or a criminal. And I've said, I don't know how many broadcasts I'll say this over and over and over. But you can clearly see some authorita that comes after you without a warrant and interferes with your rights, your properties, your interests in properties, and all these other things without the right. That is four felonies. It's actually six, but as I, got, I now find out, it's, it's extortion, the commission of it, and the omission to avoid it. It's coercion, the, commi the commission or the o omission to avoid it, or conversion. Not coercion, but conversion. It's the combination of both. And that's the commission of it and not the, o the omission to stay away from it. That's what happens against you. And when I truly understood what this was, I'm looking, that's why I tell you, if I'm innocent, I'm looking at a criminal trying to get me to do something when they come underneath an unwarranted authority. Otherwise, it has no authority and it's just a trespasser. I just reduced the whole thing about how, what you're after in, a, that, in that last statement. That's all I'm looking to do, actually. How I get there, we were talking in the UCY chat. Something something easy may not be easy to do. Uh, some, excuse me, something simple is may not be easy to do. That's kind of what we're talking about. Thank you, Kim Kim Trailer. It, it, it's easy what I'm talking about, but but sometimes it's not direct. What what I'm saying has to be done, and a lot of that has to be undoing, is the undoing of what has been imposed that was wrongly imposed. I attempt to get right at it right off the bat. I try to analyze it very quickly in order to get right at the core issue, like. This thing with the Syrian issue. Don't even, I don't even want to hear about alleged chemical attack now. You see what's happened since the allowance that you can say alleged. There's no evidence any attack happened. Why do you want to even continue the discussion on an alleged attack? And you heard me describe, and I think I did it fairly clearly, how once you allow even the allegation to sit, it opens the floodgates to more division and delay. If I shut that door... It doesn't matter about the kids, uh, 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 the people in the hospital. I'm looking at a hospital skit, a hospital stunt, because there's no one been proved there's evidence of the first thing. It's the same thing I'm talking about here. You don't allow in the authority at all. You don't, not even in your mind. That's where it's the power. I keep telling people, I keep saying to this, to you folks, our society is the, is the, uh, is the expression of us inwardly. And that's a problem for each one of us. That's the stuff we have to start solving. And again, uh, in trying to convey this idea of what, abs what innocence is, it's an absolutely no attachment of guilt in, in my mind when I'm addressing uh, almost everything. I try to find, I mean, I guess we can say we're guilty of something, but on these things that we would be talking about, I have no guilt. And I don't allow someone to impose a guilt, even with the question. Why? Because they, to me, just like I told you, your life is like a legal case, a law case, a, a suit. The alleger, the complainant, has to come with some probable cause-based evidence in his complaint. If they don't come with that in the first instance, I don't, I don't have any more time to talk to them. It's really kind of that simple. It's not all convoluted. It's that simple. And it should be that easy, but this just points out the problem, but it's not. When it's not, you have something more to deal with. And maybe, I hope I don't beat this into the ground. This is what I've been trying to do all this time behind the woodshed, is everything I've ever learned that I've been putting into a practice, into into experience, into doing things and watching and this how this beast moves and it doesn't move and what it does, how it responds, is what I bring you silently into what I talk to every Sunday or whenever you listen on the on the files that are available. It's not, you're not, you're in the belly of the beast. All of you are in. There's not something you're going in when you fight it. You're giving the beast indigestion if you're in and start to fight. If you're out, in other words, you have none of those attachments like a mineral estate grantee does. He's, got no, he's innocent of all liability within the context of his grant. 
he's got no permit to get. Anybody who tries to impose it is a criminal. Now, we don't come right out and say you're a criminal. We establish the evidence in written record to show that that's the case. All the guides I know, I said, don't get all on your uppity. Just establish the fact that they don't have the right. Put that in the record. Get that in discussion between you and put that to writing. Uh, even if they, they'll never make a writing on this, you make a writing, you send it in, you make that record. You show them in your discussion, you show them the authority doesn't exist. That's you being your sovereign. You come at it with a high diplomatic response as a statesman of your own territory, your own land. It doesn't have to be land. It could be anything that's yours. Your innocence is a big one. So I'm going to come to you and accuse you of something. Then all of a sudden you're subject to that claim. But were you subject to the claim? Forget the claim. Were you subject to it? Did the guy have what they call standing? Did they have the right to impose that upon you? If you're not asking the questions that far up front, you're missing what I'm saying. And I'm not saying I know the limit of how far up front that is. I'm saying I, I work hard to try and find what that very first problem point would be. Like I was trying to show you last week, or I think I did, if anybody anybody who was listening and under, could hear, I did say, explain how this thing, as the example of the notice we have about Syria, how even allowing the statement of an allegation of a chemical attack is a problem, and how fast it destroys that whole scenario and everything that comes after it if you ins insist that the alleger produce the proof first. Not just an allegation, but the proof. At least, at least to a level of probable cause. Because understand what happened there. The biggest military brute in the world immediately took the word of no one on no evidence and went and caused massive expense and destruction of another people. Now, luckily, they were politically, they didn't attack much. My point is, is that they did expend the energy to do so on nothing. And I've said that's the mirror against you. This is what their enforcement power is against you. They have nothing, actually. And I've been trying to show you how when they come at you, and you know they have nothing, not opine and scream and yell about how they don't have it. You show it, but you put the eat tides on it. You, you put, you put the uh, Aikido on them. And you get them bound up in their own problem. That beast now gets tied up. They get tied up by that habit they were supposed to have within the construct that was made. And a lot of that's pretty good, actually, the constraints, if we were just to get it to work, instead of just complain about it. And, and, okay, so, important to understand, you're in the belly of the beast. You don't go in the belly of the beast more to fight it. You actually give it indigestion. All right, so if you're not in the belly of the beast, which means you don't have all these connections to the system, and they come after you, now you just make sure that they don't put you in the belly of the beast. That's not going into the belly of the beast. That's saying you're the beast, and I'm a man, or I'm a woman, and you don't have the right to do what you've done. Now, that takes innocence. And there's a lot of presumptions at work, and I know all that, and that's what you're responding to. You're responding to this infiltrator on peace, this trespasser upon peace. Because your very point about having to address it is non-peaceful. And it, it predicts an adversarial condition, doesn't it? So the one coming against you who has no right anyway is already making war on you. And I'm not okay with that anymore. Uh, but conditions are such that you just don't, because you say so and think so, uh, that that ends it. There's a people out, Genghis Khan is not someone you just tell to go away. But he'll, he's, got, he's got his horde. And he's not bashful to call it. If it's not right there, waiting. And so there's realities about all this. And I, 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 I suggest strongly understanding what those are and go in your power and strength in your knowledge of that and start to do something about it. Because if we don't, listen, it's, the writing's on the wall. You see it happen. I report it on it all the time. It's very rare that we get this situation here, something that has been involved in my all my life. I've had to hear about this problem. Back to my, my father uh, was uh, in the military at the time when this all happened. Uh, to, but here we have a, a, sh a light 
that now starts to show that it's maybe possible for some kind of sort of peace. Now, I know it happened a decade ago, and this may be a false start, but who cares? At least it's an attempt, better than throwing missiles and slings and rhetoric and lousy, sophomoric words at each other. Korea, two Koreas agree to end war this year, pursue denuclearization. That was a cool story to me. I saw a video, very, very historic. You need to find the video. The North Korean uh, president, or whoever he is, uh, Kim Jong-un, walking over the uh, imaginary border of the north into the south, and then uh, walking back hand-in-hand with the south, the premier, president, whoever they are, uh, walking and standing and greeting each other on the other side. I don't know why that just seemed like a big and immense thing to see. All my life I've heard about this problem, and we see the United States fomenting all this nonsense. And I don't know much about all that's over there, and I don't know those people and their distinctions and differences, uh, but at least there's a another step forward to peace, rather than the saber-rattling, war, nuclear power, nuclear threat rhetoric that goes on like, like two ch- school children. It's totally so foreign to my thought about how the world worked when we had the word diplomats and statesmen. I can't tell you how much of a literal shock it is to even... Uh, to have just witness what's going on in the world. That that's us, folks. That's still us. But I needed to. I wanted to make a, just a short statement on this. Uh, the two Koreas. Yes, it, it was happen, tried to do ten years ago, and it got interfered with. We know that the external pressures to do certain things and the geopolitics that sits there as a pressure as well. Uh, I was. I'm really encouraged. Whatever the whatever the gameplay going on, and I think Kim Jong Un has done an excellent job in bringing his nuclear power up in order to make it a bargaining chip that makes this happen. Pretty cool what he's done there. I don't agree with all, and I don't like the impression I see. But that's not the point. The point is, is that we have ways that we can work as statesmen amongst each other to bring, bring peace. This was a big deal in my mind. I was really captivated by the, the imagery. I know it's imagery. I know it may mean nothing tomorrow, but it's there. It's an example. I thought it was important. It would be great that those people anywhere just stop being enemies. It would be great if the United States would just step back. I I understand all the geopolitical nonsense that goes on, and I see. Listen, Cain versus Abel says all these nations are going to war amongst themselves. We're not going to fix that. That's our problem, not the United States. No, that's people problem. We either have to come to this literally come to the higher awareness and work this thing through. Why I say break the revolution, the wheel of the history of revolution, break it. We need to get into some better, higher awareness on how this works for uh, for better, uh, not not what we see. Uh, so anyway, interesting. I thought I was I'm pretty captivated by the video. I, f- I felt again, it's just a it's one of those symbols, it's just one of those historic symbols. And I hope they do follow through, and I hope they can uh, do what they need to do. And uh, don't know what else to say. Why can't we do that everywhere? For for those of you that or maybe concerned now of uh, of this threat and the nuclear powers and the force. And if this doesn't work, then we're all going to nukes, and Russia's got their brand-new equipment coming in over. We're going to evo- evade any, any defense in the United States, and now we're all everyone's all sitting helpless. Uh, there's going to be up there in Wisconsin for you, there's a, here's a public service announcement, a dark sky training exercise to simulate mass power outage in Wisconsin. A test in mid-May will simulate... A mass power outage across much of Wisconsin, that's when they nuke, they nuke your atmosphere and your EMP goes off locally to you. You lose all your power. Uh, Wisconsin's preparing for this now. Uh, your area is going to go dark. Well, uh, I just wanted to point out, first of all, there's your notice. We expect that in May. But this is, in my mind, this is uh, it actually triggered more of the idea. This is what they're going to do in the new austerity. They're training you now to live without power when your smart meter says either your household or all the households in your town have used too much power, you're going to go dark. And so they're they're just getting you used to that right here. I just wanted to point that out. Nothing more than that. Great, whatever they're doing. Just understand that this is setting up uh, the testing on what people, how people respond. Uh, maybe you take this as a, as, a, as a note. For those of you that are preppers, uh, figure out how that works and understand a, a, sh- a short-term dark period is not going to be like a long-term one uh, because you're smart meter or the system grid needs to be knocked down because you're just wasting too much carbon. Interesting uh, statement uh, here uh, from, I don't know how much I want to say about this, uh, but 
there was a question put out on the internet about talking to this condition that we live in that what was interesting to me was we I speak behind the woodshed for a lot of these things and it's like again nobody how many people listen not, and, and the word doesn't get out or the word's being blocked and it's not getting back out but I have a little bit of trouble with this guy but I don't have trouble with this guy because maybe in his questions he's he's exposing his own his own truth he hasn't really admitted into the fact that that he sees what the problem is, but won't admit that it was already planned that way, and it's been like that all the time. He's just funny coming aware to it. That's this guy named uh, John Whitehead, who says he's an attorney and all. So I don't, again, just observations. It came through the Twitter about responding to this position. Is the U.S. government evil? Uh, you tell me. And it was a real, through the secondary twit, Twitter, it was a request of what do you what do you say? Well, my observation when you go through everything that this that this guy's writing now, what I've told you before, he's pointing it all out. What he doesn't understand is that's what he's pointing out is the effect uh, of the plan that he's not actually identified yet. Remember, this is the author of Battlefield America. Uh, how long have I been telling you, you you live under Battlefield America? How long have I been telling you you live in a war military consequence? How long have I long have I tell you where to find the proof of that? He calls, I tell you, uh, let me go through it, endless wars. Now, there's, you can go through the military-industrial complex. You can do it through the funding. You can go through the, uh, the it's on your back on the taxation, uh, for full faith and credit, all that nonsense that you've been set up. I've been talking to you, told you about you've been duped. It's right in the Constitution, Article 6, prior engagements. You look at the prior engagements, they're all commercial. This was a big, a big colony called the United States. Does that mean we're all lost? Well, it means we're inside that, that beast, that belly of that beast. But I've shown you with regard to land law and grants, how you can escape. And it gives you the idea how that works. So all this stuff is in a fluid type of condition. He talks about endless wars, and this would have to be if that's part of the process. He talks about the police state. I tell you, no, it's just a military state. The police is the policy state. That's the police state. He doesn't talk about it that way. It's the policy state. You're not living in a law state. And where do we hear that? I told you, The memo came out in 2010, the murder memo. Told us they, they abandoned, they went extrajudicial. There's no judiciary. And everyone wonders why they see what's going on, even John Whitehead. Uh, okay, Battlefield America, school to prison pipeline, uh, human capital, I mean, this human resource. You, you are the beast of burden, you, you human animal. Secret human experimentation, that's in Title 50. Look, uh, Clint Richardson, uh, he's got his what, lethal injection. Again, 20 minutes in, he goes and reads Title 50 to you if you want to hear it. Okay? Secret human experimentation. He's not even, he doesn't even talk about, he just talks about, he doesn't talk where it's located in the, in the code for the government to, the beast can use this. And goes, okay, so he goes on and on, talks about you guys lost in that, going through, I'm just, I'm just scrolling through, folks. My point here is there was a request about what, what, do you, what can you tell me about? Well, Folks, behind which I've been telling you about this stuff for 10 years. Uh, an attorney is writing about the effect, not the cause. Someone else who's a very intelligent woman is asking, what can you tell me about this? Well, I send out, well, we kind of know about this. It's all in the law, so-called. It's in the codes, the statutes. It's all the occupier is telling us what this condition is. And I hear crickets on all this stuff. And intelligent, uh, well-intentioned people are not listening. And if they are listening, they're, they're, they do, they impose their thought about what I'm saying, uh, their prejudice about what I'm saying on what I'm saying. And yet, it's all explainable. Anyways, I better say enough there. Another good article, but it's not going after the cause, and the cause means it's a plan, and the plan is our problem, and we can solve that if we all get together, stop being divided. divided. Stop arguing with me. Start argue, stop arguing amongst yourselves. Let's figure out what are the things that we can do. What can we do? I said we look at what can we do about Syria? Well, we can understand that what the United States does over there is what it does to you here. I've said this over and over. Why do you think we have all that nonsense? It's because we do it to other people. It's in us, folks. We have to fix that. 
And each one of you fixing that and then putting that as the example in the world is going to be the start. I, I, I can't see how it doesn't. I don't know of anybody unless they're just really, really have brain damage or a psychopath. I mean, have just a complete focused on themselves view that when they're given a better path to do or a better condition to, to get or whatever, that they won't take that path. We're not doing that for ourselves, and therefore we cannot example it to others. What we see is a reflection of that in the societies. Why Korea is such an excitement, and I, I don't know what to say. I know it could fail, but I just hope the best. It's an example of how people could start working together again instead of making all these stupid lies and stories and false witnesses that continue the crime against everybody. And so let's get, let's kind of go through this serious thing again. One quick little point. Uh, Germany's largest public news, teleca uh, te t news TV broadcaster says Syria attack was most likely staged. We touched this last week. I just want to touch it again. More and more evidence. You're going to hear about all this. There was just nothing going on there. But see, most likely staged. I want to point out again, this is not first enough in the, in the questioning. You can't say most likely staged when the accuser produced no evidence of its existence at all. And so then we look at the video in the hospital, and without the suggestion of an attack, we have a hospital stunt. And we don't have to worry about what those people say. We don't have to get them on, on the stage. We don't have to parade them in front, in front of everybody for the other side to use against you. Against you. Like well, now we have a little boy that says, that, oh, this is pro-Assad. And we had the little girl with Anna Banna, whatever her name is, that set up a counter to Assad. Bunch of nonsense. So you get inside this nonsense. Just the idea that these people on, on in so-called public TV news most likely staged. It's still a question then, isn't it? In fact, there's no evidence anything happened that whatever was staged was a stunt. We don't have to regard any of it. And this is the point. I'm not going to go into the belly of that beast. I'm not going to go there until I have a need to go there. And the need is that an, an accuser coming with a probable cause that something happened or might need more investigation to build probable cause. If we just started using that standard again instead of running away from it, I think we'd, we'd serve ourselves a lot better, even in, our private, in a private note. But look at how much wind is, the, 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 the wind is blowing the sails of this lie, this complete lie. It's not most likely staged. It's not most likely anything. Without the allegation and proof of a chemical attack, the hospital video was a stunt. It should have ended there. But no, you're watching lots of things going on. And my problem with that is everyone starts getting involved with that instead of what they should be doing. A statement that came up, I thought was a pretty good statement of a, of how this thing is working down. I'll try and read some here of it. Uh, the, the League of Assad-loving Conspiracy Theorists. Uh, gentleman pretty, pretty much lays out how this thing is working, all the lunacy behind it, the, the, the oxymoronic condition of it, the hypocrisy of it, uh, lays it out in a nice little history, if you will, but says something a little bit larger. And I wanted to point this part out, because who you're up against, again, knowing the terrain, they get you focused on something. And in fact, that's what they get you. You, you chew up all over, you chew on that bone, and, what, and that's not the game, that's not the real thing that's going on, is the thing that this article speaks to that we don't, may not be aware of the real uh, play, that I think he, he points out something very, very interesting. And the thing he points out here is it doesn't matter what you claim to be, what group of herd you go, you run, or what group, gang you run around in, whether you're a liberal or a conservative or an atheist or a you know, Jew, or whatever. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because each one of those groups, uh, inside each group, will split across two other other things that the uh, the planners, the behavioral controllers, are interested in. And this is what I tell you about having to take a step back. You don't, you've got to be careful on what you're actually buying into. That may be owned before you got there. And so this, this is an interesting discussion. I appreciated the writing. Uh, so I'm going to read a little bit of this here. Maybe we'll get a flavor for it. Uh, so global capitalists, ruling classes, war on dissent is now in full swing. I need to stop here, and I'll try not to interject at all. Once I want global capitalists, 
remember and understand how this capitalist is. Who is the actual resource that they're talking to in this capitalization but people? The human capital. And so you're looking, this is like a human slavery in global capitalism. You have to see what, how this really is, is working out. What the the point about it is, and let me just refer you quickly to Agenda 2030, it's about indenturing all populations. It's about making, uh, imposing conditions that re- that make you and your creature, as a, as a creature, the fight or flight, you will do something that they know that you're going to do that actually moves you into the thing that, that they want to get done. And this is why we have to be so cautious to identify the first point, the first step, the first legitimate step, whether or not the burden has been met by an accuser, whether or not I have to move, well, why, uh, what, what even starts the imposition, and then focus on the causative point. But uh, So, global capitalists, this is this global system of, u- of human indenturement, indentured uh, s- slavery system. Uh, but the, so the global capitalist ruling class war on dissent is now uh, in full swing. Uh, this is now to try and get in on anybody who could come together and stop it. And this is the point about information. This is the point about the printing press, if you will. This is the point about the power, the two-edged sword about what the Internet can be. Let me continue reading without interjecting with their new and improved official narrative, quote, democracy versus Putin Nazis successfully implanted in the public conscience, the corporatocracy have been uh, focusing their efforts on delegitimizing any and all forms of deviation from their utterly absurd and increasingly paranoid version of reality. In Syria, where the international community has been battling the global terrorist threat by supporting moderate jihadist militias intent on overthrowing the government and establishing a fundamental List theocracy, the corporate media have been hard at work at sanctifying the official story of the com- chemical weapons attack in Douma. According to this story, Bashar al-Assad, an uncooperative, brutal dictator whom the corporatocracy has been trying to replace with more cooperative, brutal dictator, dropped a lot of chlorine bombs, parenthetically, possibly sarin, the deadly nerve agent, onto a house full of innocent babies. He did this on the eve of victory over the moderate jihadist militias the international community has been supporting in their eight-year attempt to take over his country, slaughter him and his entire family, mount their severed heads on spikes, implement nationwide Sharia law, and then go out hunting homosexuals and heretics to gruesomely behead on YouTube. The evacuation of these freedom fighters was already being negotiated, but Assad didn't want to miss this last chance to sadistically gas a lot of women and children and have the Western corporate media broadcast his war crimes throughout the world or something more or less along those lines. This gratuitous baby-gassing massacre could not be allowed to go unpunished, so Emmanuel Macron and other senior members of the international community hauled Trump in off a golf course somewhere, or wrestled him away from the Gorilla Channel, and ordered him to ordered him to order a complete, pointless $150 million series of retaliatory missile strikes on assorted, uninhabited buildings containing zero chemical weapons of absolutely no strategic value. The corporate media and their paid menagerie of military experts and other talking heads took to the airwaves to celebrate this demonstration of international resolve, as did investors in Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, and General Dynamics. The celebrations were short-lived, however, as the corporate media needed to immediately turn their attention to aggressively counter a malicious disinformation campaign being waged by the infamous international Putin-Nazi propaganda network, i.e., anyone capable of critical thinking, Reports by the journalists actually uh, in Syria, like Robert Fisk of The Independent, casting doubt on the official story, needed to be strenuously ignored, ridiculed, and delegitimized. Fisk, a respected award-winning journalist who has covered the Middle East for over four decades, had clearly been duped by his Putin Nazi minders into the publishing pro-Assad propaganda. 
just as clearly any actual Syrians contradicting the official story, which the corporate media had scrupulously fact-checked with the United States military intelligence agencies, had been intimidated into doing so by Putin, Nazi, Assadist death squads. The nefarious network of dissension sowers is also responsible for the 400% increase in Putin, Nazi propaganda in the wake of the poisoned porridge attack that Russia carried out in Salisbury in March, in which the operatives allegedly smeared the doorknob of a former Russian intelligence officer and his daughter with oatmeal-laced Novichok, quote, the deadliest nerve agent ever devised, instead of, well, you know, just shooting the guy or throwing him out of an upper floor window. Despite the potency of the lethal nerve agent, which for some can only be made in Russia, both victims are expected to completely recover. Tragically, their cat and guinea pigs have also managed to survive, were slowly starved to death by the police, presumably out of an abundance of caution. I'll, I'll, I'll end there. I, I think you understand the tenor. I think you understand uh, what this position is. I, I appreciated uh, this point. Uh, the whole issue of getting your, your, uh, your attention focused on a thing is now starting to come a little clearer, and he identifies that here. And I'll finish it pretty much here on this, just to point out what we have to be careful of being guided into. This author says, and I don't have his name yet, uh, I'll get to it possibly, I've been writing about this since 2016, so I'm not going to try to rehash all that here. The short version is, Western societies are being divided into two opposing camps. Two extremely broad ideological camps, both of which encompass the traditional political division into left and right. Let's camp, let's call camp number one the normals, i.e., those who support and conform to the values and ideology of global capitalism, regardless of whether they identify as conservatives. Let me repeat this here, folks, is that all of y'all, and you'll just be tens on, doesn't matter what you feel, it's what you're going to be divided by someone else's needs. Whether you be a conservative, a liberal, a neoliberal, a neoconservative, or anything else. If you are any one of those groups, but fall into the values of the ideology of global capitalism, you'll be considered a normal. All of you all with those very same... Uh, ideological con uh, bents will also be looked at depending on whether or not you look at it a different way. Let's call the, the camp number two the extremists, i.e., those opposing globalism or not conforming to the, its ideolo ideolo ideology, regardless of whether their identity are socialist, communist, anarchist, fascist, anti fascist, jihadist, or whatever. While, of course, real politics conflict still taking place within each of these two broad camps, the global capitalist ruling classes are less concerned with the left-right equation than they are with normal extremist equation. This is the battle they are fighting currently, short of, the, uh, some, short of short, some sort of miraculous event. It is a battle they are going to win. They are going to win it by demonizing anyone opposing global capitalism as one of uh, any another form of extremist, as Islam extremist, Antifa terrorist, white supremacist, black identity extremist, anti-Semite, a conspiracy theorist, an Assad apologist, a Russian bot, a Putin Nazi propagandist, or whatever. It doesn't really matter what labels they use. The point is... Anyone not conforming to the globalist capitalist version of reality is an enemy of all that is normal and good. How much and how often have I said the very same thing? What I have done is to look at this from the past coming forward, saying this is all in the works. It's all written. And those of you that want to know how my thought process works, this is how it works, in part. Looking at the terrain, seeing where the most probabilistic uh, horizon is, planning, because they have much more power and organization than I do, 
planning for that to be the truth and essentially planning for that future on how I would oppose it, understanding this dynamic, the dynamic where the, you'll be labeled. You'll be, calling, you'll be called something so they can marginalize you. So what did, have I done? The thought was, well, you can't get into name calling. You can't get into ideologies. You can't get into any of that. What was one of the few things I noticed that was objective then? If it's not the so-called, everyone wants to say it's not the law. The law, the statutes, the codes, the printed, the black and white. I said, get the black and white in your eyes. All this is in there. If you can't find it in the black and white, then you're going to be one that's going to be labeled as an opinion. Once you find the narrow path, which is the black and white, they can't throw you off of it, and they have to answer to it. This is why what I keep telling you works. This is why when I talk about the consensus process, which is the met one of the methods, is dispute resolution, that's what this is. Divide and conquer, but con bring together after it's an outcome to come to by a facilitated process. They use your antagonism against each other against you both. That's that you want, a lot of people use the Hegelian dialectic. I talked to you about practice, all that stuff. Yes, but now you got to put that in practice, the actual practice, how they use it against us. And the only thing, when you start finding out that their own doc these people that do this have documentation, they'll tell you all about it. Like this consensus process does is unconstitutional, does not use any statutes, does not use codes, does not use any due process methods, but attempts to get you to consent by whatever means. You realize you have to look at that and realize, well, then the only protection is what's constitutional, statutory, codified, written down black and white. And 100% of the time, we have approached these people that do this planning and behavioral controls and whatever, and societal controls, 100% of the time, they're stopped dead in the tracks. The beast, their beast, cannot move because their beast can't move in the law. That's not their environment. So what we are experiencing today literally is the beast because it's not in the law. And the government of the United States said it's not going to follow the law because it said it went extrajudicial. There's no judiciary it's expecting to be accountable to. And the people were crickets to that. Why well, I went to crickets. Why well, I continue to go to crickets. And if you're listening to what I'm saying, I'm telling you how you avoid this stuff or counter it. And it, it stops dead in its tracks. You... The, this black and white I keep telling you about, this law that lots of people want to say, oh, I know better then, is the stuff they have to regard. And where you find the ones that protect you or protect a condition or protect a situation or obstruct the ability to move within the context of legitimate government, the way it was supposed to be set up, these people are, are killed. They cannot move in that environment. Their whole definition is that they exist outside of that. They really are the true outlaw. And then without, without any confirmation at all, they're completely a foreigner. By definition, folks, this is, this is the thing I'm trying to tell you. If you read the black and white, they'll tell you where they are, and you just have to go decide to go, how are you going to combat that? Well, if, they know, if you know where they are, you just make sure not to go do that. If they say they cannot use the law in order to do what they do, then I say you need to use the law. Whatever you think it is, I'm saying you go find to use the law they can't touch. So there's the method, part of the methodology. I'm looking within the system. I can't overthrow that. I can't do uh, change all this. What I can do is take what I find as I find it and maneuver through it. And that, these are the kinds of things I come to talk to you about here that this gentleman who's writing this, let me see if I can find it, uh, C.J. Hopkins, is American playwright, novelist, and satirist in Berlin, of all places. Fascinating. He sees it. Somebody, see, you can see it. This is a global thing, folks. He sees it. You don't have to be in any one particular spot. Literally, this is a global affront. I don't I don't know what people think about when I say 
I guess when you're in the choir, you kind of say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I'm not talking about a yeah, 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 about Agenda 21, about A2030. These are the plans that are our problem. And if you look inside their plans and you apply them, let's say, to the United States, those plans will be violative of the basic foundations of the United States. One of the places I've identified that they can't actually touch without ever being a criminal is our land laws. And so I chose to start there because that's the simplest. I'm not into making stuff up. I'm not into kind of recreate the reality. I'm not big enough. And they've, they'll prove that to everybody who wants to step up. I learned that early, early, early on. No different why I say I looked at the 13th Amendment. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, it's provable. Yeah, it's supposed to be ratified, but it wasn't. And then you find the court cases that say, but, oh, that was just something that happened. We can't change the system now. Now you realize your system is changeable, and it doesn't take a constitutional constraint. You're not living in that constitutional construct. You better take that note very clearly down and decide, is that the war you want to battle? Or do you want to look, okay, that's the game. They just they just gave us gave me a clue. I'm going to go around another way. That's not the door I want to go through. That's part of what I'm talking about here. And that, these decisions, the strategic or tactical decisions, are all made based on study. Not me making it up. Really reading hard. Sometimes having to reread ten times until I finally get the eyes to see it, what they're actually talking about. So this article here, written by a German, uh, the League of Assad-loving conspiracy theorists, is exactly what he points out. Is exactly how you're being played. You get played into a division. It doesn't matter. You can think you're opposing somebody. They're using your opposition that you think you have to someone who, uh, in these other things, to actually take you down because you're focused between your, your argument with someone else instead of where they're going to drag you. You're too focused on your fight amongst each other with your ideology instead of looking at that someone's using that against you, taking you someplace completely different, and you'll never get what you either one are talking about, ever. So we mentioned in the last thing, he talks about what you're labeling. You talk about Putin, Putin Nazis and about anti-Semitism, and, and, and we're all focused on that, and yet this story popped up uh, focusing on those two concepts where we see a known occupier is doing far worse then about anybody, and no, it doesn't held accountable. That should be another clue for you. But Israeli sniping Palestinian children was a story uh, citing Proverbs 29.10, the bloodthirsty hate the innocent. And I found that to be, you know, mind-blowing. Sometimes you see, you see the stuff for the first time in context of something, and it really kind of starts to orient the problem. Uh, to understand the Israelis, Israelis mindset in uh, committing war crimes with impunity, there's no one better to explain the Israeli journalist Ari Shavit. Quote, we believe with absolute certitude that right now, with the White House in our hands, the Senate in our hands, and the New York Times in our hands, the lives of others do not count the same way as our own. So I don't normally get into all this stuff. Uh, I think it's pretty self-evident what has to happen. I've Again, I take my own path, the path that made sense to me, and if we're talking about land and whether you are on it, to me, land law works really, really, really well. I've proposed uh, my observation about how this works out pretty quickly, uh, and to cut through these labels, to cut through to the point and the core of what we have to be, we have to be focusing on, and not to, to stop anybody who has a right, but not to allow the trespassers and occupiers to oppress either. We have to find an objective basis beyond opinion. Uh, laws and rules and definitions all come to our aid, but they're only tools. So we hear right here, the Israelis are sniping Palestinian children. How, how, who in their mind does that, 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 that has any kind of sense of, of, of man or woman or baby or, or themselves? These are touched people. These are really touched people. And we see this through history. Uh, Cain killed Abel. I don't have to go any further. Uh, you, man, uh, brother against brother is all I needed to see. We are not a cool uh, people from our origins. But we we are fallen. There's no doubt. Whatever my beliefs and some of the things in the Bible that I see, I can't I can't get that. Uh, some of that's the articles of faith. I'm I'm sure uh, absolutely. Uh, but there's some things that just don't make sense. Some things I can't quite get. Well, it it's not about that. It seems to be 
you know, a definition of do you support oppression or do you, you support peace? And I've found the, in particular when the foreign occupier comes in and tells you that they cannot follow the law in order to oppress you, you better be following some law. You better find something to follow, some objective basis. Why? Because the written record is what is the evidence that an opinion can never overcome. And that's my methodology, finding what can be reduced to objective basis, not our opinions of what we think. None of us were here for most of how this even got started anyway. And so you have to take that all into account as you're doing this. But who would kill uh, these kids? I don't care what their status. I've never understood it. And then we find out from my perspective, if you go to the land, forget these titles and these labels, you go to the land and you can pretty well cut through lots of stuff. And a bunch of things came to mind. I was looking at some things and something popped up. I said, okay, let me look at this word, because they started talking about anti-Semitism in the prior article. Uh, let me look at this word Semitic again. Let me double check. See, I'm always double checking, triple checking, continuously checking, validating these positions, these thoughts that I have. And you should too. Now, always question whether or not you have it right. Uh, you know, and the mind starts to forget things. I've sort of forgotten. I, I understand now what you mean, what it means to forget more than you learn, uh, more than you more than you remember. I mean, just so much stuff gets back. It doesn't mean I can't get back to it, but it's just not an, an, an absolute rec immediate recall. So I went back. I wanted to, what is this Semitic? So I go around Merriam-Webster's uh, Internet Dictionary. What's this Semitic thing? And I think this is very instructive as well. Remember last week we did the Natalie Port Portman thing, uh, and she's a citizen of Jerusalem. Uh, found did some uh, more research. Her, her family never came from uh, there either, not even Jerusalem. Uh, but they did come from someplace else. And the end story about this that I had to came up this week, uh, from uh, or actually was posted as a link, came from 2013. It explains the origins of the some people that are there. And I want to focus again on getting past the rhetoric and the titles and the division making things, and have a, and just as an example, how do we get at at the the real point of what are we looking at here? Who do we allow to make a claim? Well, they have to make the proof, too, beyond a reasonable doubt. Well, let's look at these terms they throw around. And it's really been a, 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 stick, a stick in my craw about this problem of using the word anti-Semite. It's misused, and I, and I really didn't understand the basics for it. But now I now have, and I think I'm going to call it, I'll try to show you how. You can make up a definition that has two meanings, and you can always persuade somebody and Use that to divide. As soon as you have more than one meaning or one direction, you can use that to cleave between a, 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 uni, um, a unification of, a, of an idea or a purpose. And I think I found it here. What is this Semitic thing? Now, we've roughly talked about it. I'm going to talk just on a surface issue. There's certainly more to talk about here, but let's just go through the definition. There's three actual meanings here. Of or relating to or constituting a subfamily of Afro-Asiatic language family that includes Hebrew, Aramaic, Arabic, and Amharic. It's a language family in use. Number two, of a relating a characteristic to Semites. Number three, the word Jewish. What I find interesting here is the word Jewish is in all capital letters. Not definitive, but just interesting the, the style has changed. So of the two definitions, we talk to a people using a language understood to be Semitic. A language, not a people. Or it's relating to Semites. So let's go look at Semites. It's fine. What are we talking about here? Two meanings. A member of any number of peoples of ancient southwestern Asia, including the Akkadians, the Phoenicians, the Hebrews, and the Arabs. B, a descendant of these people, ancient people here, folks. Number two meaning underneath this is a mo member of a modern people speaking a Semitic language. A member of a modern people. Well, that's an interesting change. How can it be from the past and ancient and modern? Well, let's look. What is this modern? And remember, folks, I've told you about all these words that the new that have come in uh, over the last hundred years or so, uh, enhancing, modernizing, security, uh, adding on to these things, and we always find out those adjectives 
are really not what we want to do. Well, let me find out here. What's the word modern? Well, I'm going to cut through the chase. There's a term called modern uh, Hebrew. Because one of the languages we're talking about that was involved in Semitics is Hebrew. But it says modern Hebrew. And the definition for that is the Hebrew language used in present day Israel. So Hebrew is not modern Hebrew. And this is where we start to see the ability to cause a division where none should actually be. And if we allow these things to happen, we're going to be caught before we even get going. If we don't call it out, define it up front, put the two dichotomies in the same sentence, we will be caught without release. Uh, I do this in other ways. Let's say uh, one term, it's very serious to get straight, is the terms in the land, public land and public domain in the grants, uh, congressional grants, is the public land and the public domain. The government wants to convolute the public land for the public domain. And so what I do is I put the two terms in one sentence. In other words, simply I would say the public land is not the public domain. There's two different definitions. One has, has the right of possession. The other one is to be possessed. And so I put, I've learned to put them in the same sentence so no one can get confused that they're, they're, they're opposed. That was, that's what has to happen here. In this throwaway word called anti-Semitism, it's done that way because they've encroached with a new definition that does not include just an ancient but also a modern division. That we are talking modern Hebrew. So what is this modern? Let's get to the word. Four definitions. Of or relating to or characteristic of the present of the or of the present or the immediate past, contemporary, the modern American family. B of relating to or characteristic of a period extending from a relevant remote past to the present time. Modern history. Two involving recent, recent techniques, methods, or ideas, up to date, modern methods of communication. As an example, number three, capitalized. Capitalized, interesting, of relating to and having the characteristic of present and most recent period of development of a language. Did you get that, folks? Of or relating to or having... Talking about the global capitalism of or relating or having a characteristic of present or most recent period of development of a language. How about the one you don't quite understand? The one that requires that decodering. Number four definition here. Of or relating to modernism. Modernist. Modern art has abandoned the representation of recognizable objects is the example there. I found this word to still have not really a very good meaning behind what we were looking, so I went to the very first word, contemporary. What is that? A marked, marked by characteristics of the present period, modern, current, contemporary American literature, contemporary standards, simultaneous. Number two, happening, existing, living, or coming into, into being during the same period of time. The book is based on contemporary accounts of the war, is the example. So this is modern condition is absolutely distinct from an ancient one. And then when you start talking about Semitics, what period are you talking about? You're not talking about a people here, remember. You're talking about language. Now you have to necessarily define which stake, which side you're, you're, you're on. And this is how they've convoluted this whole condition that you need to start to learn to par parse out. Let me go back to a word they used, but in a longer extension. In the very first definition, the word Jewish. Well, let's reduce it to Jew. What's a Jew? Now, I've told you we did the, we did the uh, discussion in, uh, uh, that came from Strong's Concordance, uh, that these are the people from Judea. Strictly that little place, right below Jerusalem. These are those ancient peoples, the Israelites. Let me go to Jew, the definition. One of a scattered group of people that traces its descendants from the biblical Hebrews or from post-exilic 
exilic, excuse me, adherents of Judaism, Israelite. One of a scattered group of people that traces its descent from the biblical Hebrews or from proselytic, I'm not going to get that one again, uh, adherents of Judaism, Israelite. Number two, a person whose religion is Judaism. Number three, a subject of the ancient kingdom of Judah. Did you hear anything about modern there? Maybe if the religion of the today is, uh, if the religion that's being uh, uh, followed is Jewish, uh, excuse me, is Judaism, yes, but does that tie to the land? And does that tie beyond language? Or does it tie to the language? Well, no, it just, but it is the Hebrew, so we look at a very specific thing here. Do we? It's all ancient, though, is the point, and it's not Israeli, it's Israelite, like I was telling you before, without the definition. And so that's what we see now. We're restricted to this word Jew, what was said before to be Jewish or Semitic. And this is all speaking strictly to ancient things. No modern history, no contemporary thought. What's an Israeli? By definition, a native or inhabitant of modern Israel. There is no old Israel. It's a modern Israel. A native or inhabitant of modern Israel. Now, while we can see a Semite could be Jewish, it's not necessarily actually Semite. And then we're only talking about a language on top of that. So I guess just speaking Hebrew would be sufficient, I suppose. It doesn't mean you have right to the land there, does it? Here's the point. Israeli, Israeli and Israelite are two distinctly different people. One is of a modern age, and the other is all the ancient. And those people are many peoples. What the current modern one is, is an imposition and fraud. It has yet to prove its right to be there. The people have yet to prove they have rights to be there. And I don't disparage anyone their right to be there. Understand that. But you are looking, that's why I think you're looking at this understood internationally, this international community so-called, recognizes the people that are there are really occupiers. They understand what we were talking about, the Balfour Agreement, which is not wasn't supposed to be a plan. Someone picked it up as one. But these people you're talking about that have the right there are from the ancient people, the Isra Israelites, not Israelis. When you use the word Israeli, you're talking about the modern people, which out, don't, by definition have no access. They don't even have the right to make the complaint. If, if I can put it in the context of the prior discussions regarding your probable cause in a complaint, you've got to have the proof. What you're witnessing here is a change of, of definition in order to allow the division. And I'm trying to explain the last few weeks without really focusing on it, how you cut through that division. And one way you do that is you put, Isra in this case, Israeli and Israelite in the same sentence like I've been doing here the last few weeks. One is not the other. And we can say loosely those that use the Hebrew language are Semitic. That's not the anti-Semitism that you would actually find when you're against the people. Those are the peoples that made up the first group, which were not, none of which were Israelis. In fact, I don't even know if any were Israelites. They were just a groups of people. And so, I'm trying to point out, as best I can, that we necessarily need an objective basis. I would list these definitions, if I had to, bullet point these definitions pretty clearly right out. I would have it in my mind how I would use that in case, with, with what I see the, the arguments to be. And all I would want to do is qualify in the beginning, are you the modern Israeli or are you, are you claiming to be an Israelite? That's my first, without getting too deep, and I haven't done a deep analysis, but that would be my first question. Are you of a modern clan, of a modern mo political movement, or are you of the ancient people? 
And once they say one or the other, you can decide whether or not you need the proof. They made the claim. They have the burden. And and so to me, I told you this before, the land, I think this land issue is land decided. If you can prove your blood to the land, and there, I don't know what else to do about that, then that's it. If you can't, I think we got a problem, and a big one. And when you have a whole bunch of world, a world that allows this problem to continue, the world has a problem. The world, it's in us, the people of the world, that has a problem. And another point, and so this comes on, all this discussion comes to this little story that turned up in 2013. That dis- and, and there could be plenty of other discussions about this. I'm just going to go with this one right now. I wouldn't even go this far. I'd strict, uh, myself, I would stick with the black and white definitions and state right there uh, in my uh, determination of whether or not I want to hear more. I don't want to hear about your religion. I don't want to hear about your rights. I don't want to hear about what you want to do to the thousands of the Palestinians. You don't have a right to be there, period. You're done. You, you show you that you're an Israelite or one of the tribes that are there. Now, maybe we have a different thing. And then you show someone there that's a violating you. Then maybe we have a discussion. But here is some genetic proof. Because Listen, they've been trying to figure out how everyone's over there right now that we can see by definition they cannot prove genetics. When there was a genetic test done, there was an article that came out in 2013, the origins of Akhenashi Jews who most recently uh, from Europe, who come most recently from Europe, has largely been shrouded in mystery. But a new study suggests that at the least their maternal lineage may derive largely from Europe. Through the findings, it may seem intuitive. It contradicts the notion that European Jews mostly descend from the people who left Israel and the Middle East around 2,000 years ago. Instead, a substantial proportion of the population originates from local Europeans who converted to Judaism, said study co-author Martin Richards, an archaeogenesis at the University of Harvardsfield in England. Let's just stop there. You can get this. You can read the article. Understand what he just said, what I've been saying. You can believe any religious belief you want. It doesn't mean you're the people from a place. And we find out the Semitic has to do with language. And so speaking of language, it doesn't necessarily mean you're Semitic in the context of having a place. We hear, we see here on this study, good, bad, or indifferent, for whether you want to believe it or not, evidence that uh, the people that originated, that are coming in now, actually originated out of, out of um, uh, Europe. What was interesting about this story is that they d- apparently do not issue out of the Caucasus Mountains, which most people say they would be originated out of, which I thought was kind of fascinating myself. But I'm not adding or subtracting here. I'm just looking at some things, some information, some evidence. More, more provable in black and white than someone's opinion. Certainly more provable than the ability of hearing that an Israeli, without ancient connection, has somehow the right to shoot a Palestinian child who does have a who does have ancient connection. This has to stop, folks. This nonsense that we just kind of hear go on and on and on. This anti-Semitism really is uh, is a really uh, good wedge builder. And, and you're seeing, that's why I jumped on that other story, the other report about the Putin Nazis. You know, you just build up these labels in people. No one ever settles down and says, let's make a definition. And for all of you all that have a different opinion, I don't bring the proof, folks. I'm not close to any of this stuff. I have what I can find as quickly as I can find it with the time I have allotted. Nothing I say and do is going to make a difference uh, directly to anybody. That's all happening over in that land. It does have something to do with how you think, what I do here. I am showing you, if my information's wrong, that can be changed. We just refix that. I'm showing you that I just did a quick little change. It just click, 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 click. We got the information. We put points after point, and we can tie together a more plausible black and white reason than our opinions could ever come up with faster. And I don't have to defend them much. If I defend them, then I don't give credit to my research and my agreement that I agreed in the beginning that it had power to inform me on how to work with it. And this is the trick that they've been pulling on all of us. They give you a label. They twist that label. Those that make the name control the name. You have to throw these things off, and you have to do that inside you first. Like I said, you you want to be innocent? Stop allowing someone to impose a guilt. Stop imposing a liability. 
We all have our own liability. We all have our things we need to do about being people in the world. We have to do our, our stuff. We have to act, you know, forthright, upstanding, honest, that kind of thing. We should. Doesn't mean that we will. We've got a lot of grades. But the point is, we have standards. We do have rules. We live by a ruler, whether everybody want to disguise that or not. We're living by a ruler. It better be you. And it better be some principled position. And the best thing I've found in all this stuff is the black and white that we find that we've all agreed to this point, uh, at this point for the most part, is how we we behave ourselves with. You go to opinion, you go to let someone call you names, defame you without proving it, and you've just walked into the you talk about a swamp, there you are. And the big and they and they get such there's so much traction on this. It's such a weapon that people uh, gr people can develop organizations that use it as a club to beat everybody down with. But there's a limit, and that's the limit is where someone finally believes the defamation did go too far, has the proof, and can stop an oppressor. And this evidence came up in lineage with this Israeli anti-Semitic thing, uh, groups and peoples that uh, we call them snowflakes and all that, taking this so-called, um, they, they put everything on their on their chin or something. I don't know. They, they can't, I don't even know how to describe these people. You, you get, you're triggered, folks. I mean, just like the world was supposed to guarantee you something. In light of all this terror and horror, no, we're going to be triggered now. But the SPLC is one of those groups that took on this cause for the victims of the world, because it's so good of a tool and a weapon against all y'all in dividing you up. Southern, but here's what happens if you want to step up, what I've been trying to suggest to you. Southern Poverty Law Center scraps its anti-Muslim hate list. Remember, this is supposed to be a, a it's the go-to organization globally for how to protect people against hate mongers hate crimes. They made a list which someone called out in them was a defamation upon them. And when they finally got called out, this is the people that were used anti-Semitism against you, how they got to the Muslim thing, and they will say that you are something, they will title you a name and defame you, slander you, libel you, and you'll take it. Somebody, I want to go read the story, somebody didn't. They challenged what that title, what that defamation was, and we see here that the Southern Poverty Law Center is not the objective basis it was supposed to be, and it can be attacked, and it will have to respond. Do you do you do that in your life? Do you make people respond more correctly, folks, or do we just take it? Do we let these bullies? Use these terms in order to gain advantage and cause division instead of calling them out. And I don't, I certainly don't believe I played any part, but remember, just weeks ago, I called this problem out in the SPLC because on their own website, again, you go to their own black and white. Remember, you go to the terrain you're working on and take it for what you find. But what they said, what was my comment about this that I told you about? S the comment in another article is that SPLC's claim to objectivity is nothing less than fraudulent. Why? Because when you go to their website and you look at their mission, it's that they work to, they claim that the beliefs or practices that attack or malign an entire class of people, typically for their immutable characteristics, will be addressed. This is the hate thing. You have a belief belief or practice that attack and malign an entire class of people, typically for their immutable characteristics, you are considered a target by these people. Someone stepped up and said, well, I'm one of those people you're attacking. And they had to back off. Is what I'm telling you, you all have to do at some point, whatever the point is on this. People make these titles, these divisions in our societies, and no one goes up against them the right way. Everyone's too afraid to call them out. Some, a lot of people don't even know how to begin. And defamation, I've talked about this. This is a pretty hard thing to go anyway. There's like eight outs for someone who defames or libels you. They can just claim to be insane. And so that's a, that's a whole study by itself in a way. The point is, is that someone didn't take it anymore. And they stood up on this, on this labeling 
this improper labeling by someone who carries the banner of protecting those that may be oppressed. And they're the major oppressor. Is the technique against all of us. Is one of the methods. They find a victim and they support the victim and it may be a fraudulent fraudulent victim or fraudulently described, fraudulently framed, and they get a lot of people to, to agree because they have the techniques on how to control you, your mind, your perception. It's all about perception management. And so what perception are you going to allow to be managed is the other thing. And what perception are you casting when you don't act? This is why I say the crickets. What do you think you're doing when you don't respond to this stuff? You make excuses. If you misinterpret what I'm saying on how it works, you're going to find a loss because you didn't you didn't do it correctly. That's not going to work. That's going to that's not that's just going to actually aid and abet the other side too. This is how exacting this actually comes. The double-edged sword is not a joke. It cuts going both ways. I ask you find the handle. Find the handle to that thing. Don't let it. Don't let be on the cutting edge of either side. Don't be on either side of the cutting edge of it because it's not about it's the it's you're you're being cut with that. Grab the handle if you can, or get out the way. Don't even come in close. But I mean that's not why you're engaged. These people, uh, SPLC, is are supposed to be the experts. They got finally called on something, and they immediately backed down. Another the sign of a bully. No objective basis whatsoever. The thing I continuously ask you to find in your life, in what you're doing, in the wrong you want to make right, find the objective basis. Lead with that. Even if you leave and f leave, lead by fumbling around, it's better that way than to not have that objective basis and fumble because they'll catch you quick. They'll catch you up really, really quick. And yet it's simply, it's simple, uh, funny how when you do it more correctly, you look and see what the, instead of denying the objective basis, you actually engage it. You actually look honestly at the condition. You actually look and take honest assessment. Only do what you can do. Don't try to, try to be the big hero. Take it slow. It's not a, not a hero thing, actually. Just doing it is the being, is the hero. So you gotta, just gotta keep doing it. You gotta, th longevity and just doing it is really the object. Not not to just to work for the rest of your life, but because these things are so organized against us, they end up taking that kind of time. Even if you're just putting in, you know, 15 or 20 minutes a, a week, a day, it depends on your on, on your subject. It's just a little bit of time all the time, if you can devote, we'll start to do it. Even just getting these concepts, like I've been talking down, just going and getting these these basic word word definitions, putting them together in a context, not just on the just because you can read the definition. No, apply it to a context, just like I hope I did here, applying the problem between the word Israelite, Israelite and Israel, Israeli, Israelite and Israeli, in the context of the Semet, uh, Sem, Semites, or Semitic. We, we, we clearly see one deals with the ancients. The one that's invented is, is today, and those, th those two don't cross at all. And that's what they try to do. They cro cross them up. And when you allow that and don't keep that straight, they confound the issue and they win these ad, ad these adherents to their side. Look at what SPLC has done on defamation. This is the same thing I, I say about you know when you get these people that are attacking you, even the court system. You got to start calling that out, and you can't be bashful about how how you explain that. But you have to have the black and white approach, not the one as your opinion. You just don't say it's like defamation. You point out. You, you have the proof yourself. You are the alleger there. You got the accuser. You're going to have to prove that first. And when you do, it's done. Really, essentially, that's done. The work is in the preparation. The work can be in the record. The, the, the ultimate work is in setting it up in your mind correctly. Don't work from your prejudices. Don't work from your beliefs that you have it. Uh, knowing, knowing, like I said, I'm always looking to see if I misunderstood something. What can I? And sometimes I'm wrong. Sometimes. <laughs> so it's just a matter of continually checking your your position relative to the reality of things. And, and so, uh, I, I, my 
I mean, if SPLC was doing great work, fine, and it, it, it's not violating some people, but we see that it violates people. And it's using this division that you saw in the first article that we were reading that they don't care what you believe is an ideology. They just care that you're fighting with somebody. And they'll take, they'll get all of you all that are different ideologies on the same side versus who you thought was a, a, a consistent ideology with you, but they'll get them to divide with you. It's like the enemy of my, my friend of my enemy is my friend kind of thing. It's just nonsense. You're not going after the one that has caused that division. And the way you get at the division is by objective basis, not your, not your opinions of it. And sometimes finding the objective basis is a little bit difficult. Some of this stuff is pretty obscured. I ran across something, uh, some, some links that came to me, pretty fascinating stuff. I won't get too much into it quite yet. But the, the people that were speaking and finding, doing some great work finding out uh, getting the proof of certain things, were oblivious to the underlying foundation of what they were actually looking at and could not understand what they were seeing. And that subject matter happened to be something I studied a long time ago, and I, it made complete sense to me what was going on. It wasn't an absurdity. But it leads to a more profound understanding and a deeper truth that until you see the those elements won't come to you. And so this is where I say we all need to work together because what they didn't see, I get to see. What I don't see, someone else might see. And pretty soon we're advancing very quickly on our objective. Where by ourselves we may, may have gotten there, but it would take a long time. We could if we work together. We could with properly uh, uh, stopping the division. Uh, we could move forward much quicker and get some of this stuff done. Uh, really well. And I, that's why I, I, I guess I'm a little bit optimistic about that, even though it doesn't look like it's going to happen. And I don't know, maybe part of me is, uh, says I have to look at it that way because I'd, uh, what would I do? If I realized that it really wasn't going to happen, what would I do? Why would I come here? Why would I come and talk with you all if it was just going to be a nothing? And that's why I appreciate anybody contact or works with me or ask questions or post my stuff and has a comment to the thing and, you know, reminds, like on mine, reminds and all that. Maybe, maybe the word's getting out, folks. Maybe something's going to trigger in your mind. So you look at something just a little bit different, and that opens up the whole door for you. Give yourself the benefit of that. And then you'll be able to want to, you'll want to live forever. And you want to take all that brain mat, all that stuff, all that experience of you, and you want to move, transport it through time. And they're going to work on that for you, the technocrats that these people are. You may never get it action, but you can work toward this, folks. Pig brains kept alive after decapitation. Do I need to read more? Pig brains kept alive after decapitation. So here's the beginnings of uh, your head being severed. They're going to grow a clone body for you, and eventually you'll put the old face and body, a head on this old new body, and you'll run around with all your experience in the future forever. How's that? Pretty cool, huh? I think it's cool. But think about it, folks. Now, these pig brains, they, they were able to keep them alive, but they didn't think that they had consciousness, which was kind of an interesting statement all of its own, that a pig has consciousness. But they're working on it, folks. They've already done the first human DNA. Now they're severing heads. Uh, they're already doing clones. I don't see the I don't see the future too far away for you being able to uh, live forever. I don't know how face how your face is going to be looking in two or three body sh changes, but uh, and I don't know how your clone is going to agree. But maybe they make the brainless clone as well, and then there's no it's just a piece of meat, right? And they didn't just get your head. Uh, transplanted onto the next youthful body. <laughs> anyway, kind of cool, kind of a neat thing, but uh, scarier and scarier as we move along. Uh, so as we get into these me medical uh, miracles, uh, we also find medical atrocities, and this is where this tends to start to go, unintended consequences and the like. Uh, we have truth about Gardasil demands that Department of Justice investigated HPV vaccines, uh, was uh, on this and and to the comment I may go, I'm going to write an email to a uh, emailer but uh, if you're here, if you're here listening and the question is I've been getting on to some health issues that that's uh, an, that's just a coincidence a lot of there's been a many many months I I haven't actually talked about a lot of health issues it all depends on what the important information is that comes in during the week in the last few weeks yes I've been talking about health issues but in the same token your health is all we got our health is all we have, and so I do speak about it. I do not want people harmed, and that's really more of what I'm speaking to here. And uh, as, as we, it'll, 
ebb and flow the amount of health issues that I talk about or, or tend to want to identify people more in the idea of warning or awareness. Uh, Merck has made a public their exclusion uh, criteria for the Gardasil HPV vaccine and documents filed with the clinicals, the trials.gov for clinical trial uh, number, number aka mother daughter initiative. If these exclusion criteria were known by and applied to families in the United States of America prior to the vaccination of their child, virtually none of the 20, 22,000 girls and boys listed by the CDC's VAERS reporting system ha as being injured by the Gardasil HPV vaccine would have been allowed to be vaccinated and 100% decreased white HPV vaccinated children would still be alive today. A shocking opening statement. But you can read the tail of the tape there if you want to. Just want uh, this HPV is really being found out now that when you start looking at it, finally we're starting to get uh, the proof of what what these these things can do, uh, and gives you your bag of, of of facts of how you are going to approach an imposition against you uh, about using certain uh, certain vaccines. Again, there's a study that has to be done about this, but uh, notwithstanding that. This one is showing to be no good at all. Like, I mean, I don't know how long I've been talking about this one not being any good, but here it is. Now they give it to your little boys, too. Like, we don't know why. But anyway, oh, you're going to want to spread this stuff. But it's all based on a fraudulent lie. Uh, so moving on. The world-renowned scientists have their lab shut down after troublesome vaccine discovery. Uh, was another important uh, discussion here. Let's piggyback on that uh, aluminum uh, uh, transportation uh, theory that was uh, so-called theory using the macrophage that I reported on that only has six views on YouTube, <laughs> uh, that this uh, doctor expands that awareness. Uh, this doctor found, uh, and she's been attacked, and her husband, the, their lab has been attacked, but they found, just because I'm going to move this along, they found that not only the aluminum gets moved, but there are more metals in these uh, in these vaccines than they are explaining, and those can be concentrated by the body as well. And so, when we get into something like Gary L's being focused on here over time uh, recently about 5G and what that energy, that microwave energy, does, you start to see the prob potential problem of heating, at least thermal heating, uh, with concentrated energies in spots where metal particulate concentrations are made. That's what I wanted to point out here. You've got to be careful. These holistic doctors are dying. It's another story that's been ongoing. I don't touch that too much. I just wanted to have a link for you. Uh, these are, you know, various uh, doctors that are looking at the fact of what actually is going on in these pharmaceutical things, and they just disappear. They're suicided or whatever. Or they do their own, you know, double shot in the back of the head, whatever. Uh, this is what's happening inside the structuring of the bottom line, and it's at least questionable if I didn't have any proof more than an opinion, it starts to look pretty uh, pretty questionable what, what's going on around the information that you're getting and why it makes it so much more important for you to work in your objective basis. Look, work very, very hard for that. Uh, they're they're going to make it that all obscured and, and it's, again, not, not, not good for us. And part of that is, a, I can't see how it's not a plan. Otherwise, why is it going in this direction anyway? Why does the government allow crime against you? That's what permits and licenses are. That should give everybody a clue. Why does it give itself under Title 50 license to hurt you all? That should give you a clue. All right, so it's pretty, writing's on the wall and all this stuff for me. It has been. A lot of, quite a few quality people have been bringing that information out, uh, and you're, it's there for you. But uh, you're going to have to take that in uh, and, and then turn around. You're going to have to use it. Having it in you is not going to do anything. Thank you for tuning in today. Hope something I said uh, inspired you, give you something to look at. Read, read, cogitate on, remo rem uh, work on. Uh, Grimner, thank you for doing what you do at RealLibertyMedia.com and uh, over there, Freakers, uh, uh, excuse me, at uh, FreedomNetwork.com. Uh, you need, uh, I think, donations for that to keep going month to month. And Jules over at UCY.TV, thank you for what you do. We don't get to talk with you much, but uh, appreciate all the uh, the uh, places that you got the broadcast there during the week. And uh, those of you that uh, will, will next week I'll be with you, Tech Diffs or Nature Willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, I just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 